Monday, Alpha Hogan's are exposed. It's from the National Inquisitor. <laughs> Alien shocking secret revealed. Ooh, this could launch my career. David's foreign affair uncovered. Oh, dear. Paris romance with a princess. She's a princess? These stories and more. Blood is draining from my head. All new Alpha and the Hogan family, Monday. Such a sweet insanity The more you learn, the less you know In the heart of every family There's a love that starts by letting go Step by step, day by day Reaching out along the way Hand in hand, we face our fear Together through the years We get closer Nice to know your friends are near In the heart of every family There's a love that's waiting there for you about Mork. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome back to Sitcom All Ye Faithful. It's Friday night. I'm coming at you for the really the first night show of uh, this year. Now, yes, I record most of my episodes at night, but usually I get them done the night before and get them out to you. So when you wake up in the morning, you'll go, Ooh, Mom, Dad, there's a new sitcom on you faithful to listen to. Shut up, Timmy. I'm trying to listen to yesterday's episode. But today uh, and yesterday, uh, I, I just, there's been too much going on in real world stuff. And uh, just the timing allowed for me to not get the episode done last night, but to get the episode done for you right now. And could I have chosen a better show to talk about on this Friday evening? Folks, I bet you couldn't name uh, shows that are better than today's show on one hand. Uh, You'd need a lot more because there are many, 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 many shows that are better than today's show, The Hogan Family. And today, I'm here talking about Season 6, Episode 13, Ho Ho Hogan's. Or you could say, Ho Ho Hogan's. That'd be more like if they were pimps. This is a very interesting episode for me, uh... Well, not for me. I think it's a very interesting episode in general um, because it is a Christmas episode, but there's some kind of, there's kind of some behind the scenes things that I found interesting to me. Uh, this show, I watched, I think I watched this show pretty religiously. It lasted for six seasons, which I was surprised by, but I remember it being on for quite a while. 
the thing is, is this show went through many um, changes. And I say many, well, it went through many title changes, okay? This show started as a sitcom called Valerie. It was a family sitcom where uh, television, like, uh, megastar Valerie Hopper was returning to uh, sitcom television, weekly television, in a fa- in a show uh, where she raises her family while her da- while the dad of the family is off flying planes all over the world. Uh, but after the what I thought was the first season, it was after the second season uh, because the first season only had ten episodes. After the second season. Valerie Hopper uh, held out for a uh, salary dispute, and they were like, you know what? That's cool. Uh, we'll kill off your character. You're out of here. Boom. And the show was no longer Valerie. The show was now Valerie's family for one season. Then, after that season was done, they renamed it again. Let, let's get rid of Valerie altogether. The show is now called The Hogan Family for the final three seasons. So it was really only... The Hogan Family for half, half the time that it was a television program. What I didn't realize is that the show aired on NBC for only five of the six seasons. The final season, the show aired on CBS. Urkel did the same thing. I know the show is called Family Matters, but sometimes you just call it Urkel. The first, I don't know, 30 seasons of Family Matters, I forget how many they were. They were all on ABC, part of TGIF, but I remember it moving to CBS for that final season. It's weird seeing shows do that sometimes. Uh, more recently, you see things going to going to streaming, going to Netflix. Um, but the, for me, the most recent show that I loved was Brooklyn Nine-Nine was on Fox for a few seasons. And then it came back to, it was canceled and NBC brought it back for a couple more seasons. Uh, and it was, to me, just as good. Uh, that show, if anyone has not watched that show, huh, I should do an episode. There must be Christmas episodes. There are Christmas episodes on that. I know they do Halloween heists, but I have to remember. I've seen every episode, but there are definitely Christmas episodes. I should do one of those someday. Um, But this year, this is the latest show I've done so far, right? 1991. And this show is like, it's an 80s show that creeped into the 90s, but it went into the 90s full blast, especially with the twins, the quote-unquote twins, uh, the the brothers Mark and um, Willie. Willie, his name was Willie. What? A, that's a I don't know. That just seems like an like a bad name for a sitcom character. I wanted to call him David, but Jason Bateman was David Hogan. Jason Bateman really was the star of this show. Uh, he. You know, we talked about him being on Silver Spoons. He was on It's Your, it's Your Move. And this was his big um, kind of big TV role for a while until, of course, Arrested Development, which cemented him as a comedic adult actor as well as being a comedic kid and, and you know, teen actor. Uh, and I don't count Teen Wolf 2 as any sort of, um, you know, stepping stone in his acting career. Uh, but... If uh, if ever uh, Michael J. Fox and Jason Bateman wanted to make Teen Wolf three, where they 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 have to raise a group of uh, uh, their their nieces and nephews, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, so the show uh, retooled itself when they killed off Valerie. I I don't remember how she died, um, but they brought in Sandy Duncan, and she did the classic Tony Danza, Joey Lawrence. Uh, uh, route. She took that route and became Sandy Hogan. Sandy Hogan? Uh, and she is the uh, main dude, Michael Hogan's sister. She's on Sandy, and she's there. For the, she moves in. She takes care of the, the kids, and she basically plays, fills that mother role that Valerie uh, didn't want to do, I guess, for the money. Imagine the show lasted would have lasted five years. Who knows? Maybe it would have lasted longer with Valerie because of her name. I don't know. Sandy Duncan, most known for being Peter Pan. And growing up, my dad told me she had a glass eye. I went on to Wikipedia today all my life. I, I went through life. You know, how many people have gone through life thinking Sandy Duncan 
has a glass eye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she does not. She had surgery in an eye uh, to take out a tumor and was blinded in that eye. So she has no sight in one eye, but damn it, those are her eyes. And I, um, I watched today thinking, damn, like I, I can't tell which eye is the glass eye. And there's a reason for that. Neither of them are. So anyway, what I was talking about was uh, the, the 90s um, dress of the twins, Mark and Willie. They both dressed like they raided um, Eddie Winslow's closet. It's like they went, they, they left NBC, they ran over to the ABC stage, went to Family Matters, said, Eddie Winslow, what do you have that you're not using? Can I borrow that shirt? Can I borrow that shirt? Big, f- like pillowy, like f- feathery button-down shirts and slacks. I mean, it felt like, I looked, it looked like how kids dressed in my high school. I went to a, uh, a all-boys Catholic high school, and you didn't have uniforms, but you had to dress sort of the business casual look, a collared shirt or a, a turtleneck, and no jeans. And it looked like Willie and Mark perfectly fit in that, uh, that kind of timeline. Absolutely. Because 1991, uh, this is... Um, you know, my sophomore year. But here's the thing. Here's the funny thing. This episode is two things about this episode that, that I found interesting uh, before I even talk about what happened in the episode. Number one, this was episode 13 of season six. This is when the show moved over to CBS. This was the final episode ever of the Hogan family. This is the series finale of the Hogan family. It doesn't seem like it, it definitely wasn't meant to be, but the show got canceled. And the, another interesting thing about this, because the show was canceled early, this episode wasn't televised until summer reruns the following July. So the sixth season started, you know, in September when, when most TV shows do or did then. A lot of them start uh, later now. In fact, Honestly, in today's kind of streaming model, shows will start any time of the year. Uh, There is no, you know, there's still the network kind of summer hiatus, but there are always shows there filling every spot. The show, you know, started in September of 1990, aired episodes in September, October, November, December, and then boom, nothing. The show was canceled and they had a few episodes left. They waited till July to air the, the final episodes. In fact, uh, Ho Ho Hogan's was part of an hour. There was an episode on before it, and then Ho Ho Hogan's aired as the final show of uh, the Hogan's. At this point, everybody seemed to have moved on. I would assume is you know it was you know seven months later. Uh, so just an interesting little tidbit for all you uh, Hogan's heads out there that you know th- there are Hogan's heroes heads, there are Hulk Hogan's heads. Uh, but but for those of you who are true Hogan family heads, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Also, IMDb, please list the show as Hogan as the Hogan family, okay? Not Valerie. This is listed under Valerie. That is garbage. Now, what the hell am I talking about? I've already talked uh, well over ten minutes, and I haven't even discussed this episode. It is classic sitcom. There's an A story a B story and a C story. Uh, The A story is David is uh, trying to make money to go on a ski trip. Of course, what else? And he is, he's trying to make quick money. And the way to do that is to become a mall Santa because the mall Santa it's, it's quick money in the season. The, the, all the malls are looking for him and he's got him and he got, he's got his, his best friend, uh, the nerdy guy. What the hell's his name? Bert as his elf. And he goes and, uh, becomes a mall Santa. All, he, he doesn't care about these stinking kids, you know, because you, you remember David Hogan was kind of a wise ass prick, which you, Jason Bateman played that character so well, which is why the uh, Michael Bluth character as the only sane one was a new thing. And I found it, you know, um, it was kind of cool to see. Don't forget, he was also, you know, he'd been in a bunch of movies by then too. 
wasn't it like dodgeball where he came out of nowhere and you're like, oh, he he's he's still funny. Uh, wasn't that before uh, Arrested Development? I think, but I don't remember. So, um, he wants to be a mall Santa. All these kids come up. He doesn't care about them. Then one kid comes up at the end. And he's the last kid. And he's like, he goes, hey, Bert, watch me get rid of this kid quick. Hey, kid, how you doing? Hi, Santa. You didn't come to my house last year. Can you come this year? You know, uh, oh, sure, sure, sure. And he said something about, um, you know, he was sad. He goes, you will? Uh, maybe I'll give you my address. And he's like, oh, okay. Go, okay. There was one kid who said, I know you're not the real Santa. And he was this, you know, the, the whole thing where you get a wise ass kid. Um, but with this kid, he said, uh, hey, kid, would you like a dollar? Santa has money. Sure. I make money up at the North Pole. Uh, the kid leaves and he leaves with his mom and his mom looked really familiar. And then David's like, oh, my God, that stinking kid. He stole my wallet. While that's going on, you have uh, Willie and Mark, both in their Eddie Winslow clothes, both excited because they have girlfriends this year. Girlfriends that are in the opening credits of the show. They get they get top billing as credited, you know, uh, characters. I mean, not top billing, but they're in the opening credits. It's not like, oh, also ooh, featuring these people. Uh, Angela Lee Sloan as Brenda Walker is one of the girlfriends. And I think that was Willie's girlfriend. And Mark's girlfriend was Josie Bissett, who went on to be a big deal in Melrose Place. Uh, but they were, they were only in the episode for about two seconds at the end. But the big thing with them is the boys want to find the perfect Christmas gift for the girls. And they think they found them. And let's show them at the same time. And they both got the exact same sweater. And this was one ugly effing sweater. Very 1991 looking sweater, but still pretty ugly. Uh, and they're like, well, we can't give them the best, the, the, the same gift. Let's, you know, let's go return it together and go get something else. So they go to deal, do with that. And they come back and neither of them return their gift. Ha ha ha. Funny. They both wrap them. They show that grandpa, because now this year, their grandpa is living with them. I don't know how long this fella's been there, but John Hillerman, mofo John Hillerman, yes, from Magnum P.I. Higgins himself was a regular on the final season of The Hogan Family. Can you dig it? Uh, so he's there, and at one point he's like, look, Grandpa, don't you think he should return? And Grandpa's like, that's an ugly sweater. But, you know, he says it the way Higgins does. He's like, that is an ugly sweater. Uh, and they're like, what? So fine, let's do the right thing. Let's both go, both return it, and really get something different. Then at the end, at the Christmas party, oh, we'll get there. While that's going on, the, uh, the actually, this is kind of four stories because Sandy is trying to get this ugly tree that Mrs. Poole helped her bring in, Mrs. Patty Poole, uh, Edie McClurk. They please help us, you know, with this tree. They bring it in. This tree is garbage, but she's trying to make it work. She's trying to use these lights. She's trying to use all this stuff. And it's just getting this tree hung up. It's not working. Okay, that's her thing. At the same time, her dad wants to do the old Hogan traditions, like uh, Seamus Hogan did in the past. And he wants to do a Christmas goose. He wants to do, uh, a, did he say figgy pudding? He wants to do everything that, the, that, the, um, that his family did. While the dad, Michael Hogan, who's here in this episode, not always there, but he's here now. He's home for Christmas. He wants to do a turkey. He wants to do it his way. It's his house. He wants to do it his way. So they butt heads. Hilarity tries to ensue. So, Mike, um, the uh, kid comes back. So there's a knock at the door. And the mom is like, uh, Santa. And he sees David Hogan, uh, Jason Bateman. Um, my boy took your wallet and uh, he needs to apologize. And, uh, you know, we, I found it yesterday. I'm sorry, mom. I just, and then when they're leaving, goes, I just wanted to get you something for Christmas because the, it's so cold. I wanted to get you slippers and a robe. Uh-oh, poor kid alert. Um, classic sitcom uh, trope. So they overhear this and they leave and Sandy's like, David, don't you think he was, I think they're running a scam. He goes, I'm going to, 
I'm going to go use this money and I'm going to go, you know, skiing. But hypothetically, if what size do you think she is? And Sandy tells her what size. Oh, she says, you know, when I was a kid, you bought me something uh, really nice. She talks about this ornament that she has that, uh, that David bought him and you couldn't wait to give it to me. And you saved up and, you know, you, you were nice then. Basically, you used to be nice before you were a prick. And he goes, this, she says, this is the ornament. Oh, but it's broken. It broke in half. And she, it wasn't really a great ornament. It was like this little reindeer. Uh, she goes, I know. It, it broke in half when the tree fell over. Um, but anyway, you know, I, you, you go do whatever you want to do. That's fine. That's right. I'm using my money that I'm getting my paycheck and I'm going skiing. Uh, so, but he says, hypothetically, what size do you think she is? And he tells her. And that's kind of the end we see of them. Um, but here's the thing. Just for you, if Brandon, if you're listening, the mom of this kid is uh, the mom from Boy Meets World. It's Mrs. Matthews. Okay, boom. Uh, you know, I know Brandon just fell off his chair. Get up, buddy. Keep listening. So at the end of the day, um, everybody makes up. You know, the dad and the father are like, you know, we could have the goose and the turkey. I found it. Uh, and, he, and he's like, I'm sorry. Just, let's make room for new traditions. Then... Uh, Mark and Willie are like, let's show you our presents. I can't wait. And they both got the exact same thing again. But the girls looked at it differently. She's like, ooh, this makes a nice scarf. And the other girl says, ooh, this makes a nice headband. And like, we did it, I guess. It was better than the sweater, I must say. Uh, and finally, Santa David Hogan comes into the house and he's got gifts for everyone. Gifts for all the girls and Mrs. Poole because Mrs. Poole's there alone for some reason. Uh, got gifts for her brother. The, the two brothers got gifts. For his brothers uh, got gifts. has a gift for his dad and his granddad. And he has a gift for Sandy. And she opens it up and it's the ornament. Oh, he got a new ornament for it. And, and, it, and it, you know, this time it's not broken. We And then they all say happy, merry Christmas. And it freeze frames. And that's the end of the show. That's the end of the season. That's the end of the series. The Hogan family is Kaputsky and nobody really comes out of that show to, to go on to big things. Mrs. Poole, Edie McClurg has been steadily working for a million years and uh, you know she has been a voice on Spongebob I think for 7,000 years uh, still still working today. Um, Sandy Duncan, maybe she went back to uh, I don't know, went back to um, Broadway Josie Bissett obviously went on to, she was a bigger star than either of uh, any of the other kids on the show, uh, except Jason Bateman, who obviously went on to, you know, bigger superstardom things. The dad never much did things, even though he kind of, you know, he looked like he could have been some sort of leading man. He, But he has been on Days of Our Lives, I guess, for 2,943 episodes, according to IMDb, uh, which is a lot, a lot of episodes, a lot of episodes. Uh, and he st- it says 2022, so apparently freaking Days of Our Lives is still going. Sandy Duncan, um, well, she was on um, some SVU episodes, uh, some Scooby-Doo. As she played Sandy Duncan in a Scooby-Doo um, TV show from 2020. Uh, but her big thing really was uh, Broadway stuff, Peter Pan, and the Hogan family. Uh, and the brothers, yeah, you know, Danny Ponce, Ponce, I never knew exactly what to call him. Uh, weird, he doesn't even have a photo on IMDb, like a profile photo. And after, um, you know, playing in, after playing, after being in uh, Valerie slash um, the Hogan family, she didn't do a ton. She was in an ALF TV movie. He was in an ALF TV movie. Uh, he was on... Happy Days, he uh, was with young... He actually is the boy in the final episode of Happy Days that uh, Fonzie adopts, I believe, right? Yes, I believe he is. But he's been around. He was on an episode of Scrubs. Uh, it's uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Again, that's uh, 2006, so that's what, 18 years ago or whatever that is. Wait a minute. 40, 15, 16, 16 years ago, right? Yep, yep. He was in something called Here to There, last year and he was in the Black Dahlia that was a movie but he played an MP so just a bit part 
his brother, the who was the smart, I'm the smart one. Um, I'm the smart uh, kid on the show. He went on to, let me look, Jeremy Licked. I don't think he went on to do Lickety Split. If you know, Sorry, that's, that's me. He was in Swamp Thing? Oh, from 1992. There was, an, there was a TV series that came back. Um, he did, from 1993 to 2009, he did nothing. Then he's been in, uh, well, that's a podcast series. That doesn't count. And that's a short. That doesn't count. What the hell? He really hasn't done anything since Valerie, uh, except for one episode of Swamp Thing. Hey, Omar, look at the way the cup floats in like a boat in the water. That is a Swamp Thing reference to some sort of cartoon, some sort of uh, environmental commercial uh, thing they did. Some people might get it. But yet this guy, Jeremy Lick, has some recent headshots made. They're definitely recent. He's, de- he's smiling. He's got glasses on. They're, they've they're, they've got to be recent. Uh, he has directed... Let's see. What did he direct? He directed... Uh, oh, he produced one thing. Oh, that was the thing he that here to there, he was a producer on it. That's why you know, nobody knows what the hell it is. And he... Oh, that's another short. Who gives a crap? Um, yeah, I think I'm done talking about this. I just... I found it interesting because it was a show that I don't think it was never the most uh the like the a cultural you know icon no no huge characters came out of it uh no like you know where Urkel be, went on to be like a, a pop icon and, and had toys and, and cartoons and cereal and stuff nothing like that came out of it it was never like a critically acclaimed show I don't think it was just kind of a generic uh family show with some good um, with Jason Bateman on it to, to really anchor the show. And uh, it was just a show that I, I remember enjoying. And Mrs. Poole was pretty funny, Edie McClurg. Um, but that's it. Not every one of these shows I'm talking about is going to be a legendary sitcom. This is just a sitcom that um, reminds me of being a kid. And uh, wow, seeing those twins, those fraternal twins, in their, uh, and they were kind of a jerk to their grandfather. Some of the things they said. I mean, it's supposed to be funny, but some of these jokes, you know, in the nineties, it's like, what are you, what are you, what are you, stupid? That's that was a joke. Ha ha ha. It didn't, it didn't actually say it like that, but it's kind of like that. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm done talking about the Hogan family, and I'm glad I did. I am. I am glad I did because it's never not every day that you talk about a Christmas episode that's actually the series finale of a show of a of a series that aired in July. You know, this, this show, this episode's got it all. And here's the thing. It's actually free to, uh, to stream, or at least I watched it for free on Daily Motion. I'll put a link to it in the show notes so you can check it out yourself. You know you want to. You know you do it. Do it. Click on the link. Do it. Do it now. Now, I'm done. So listen, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Geek Mentality. The Facebook page is Fans Not Experts. The website is fansnotexperts.com. This is Sitcom All Ye Faithful. I'll be back again tomorrow for another episode. But until then, my friends, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. And here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kind of handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this episode Fast, not experts